if I not able to do any other thing, at least I will sleep and sleep my head out. Praise the living Jesus. Praise God. First, I bring greetings from Pastor. Um, I spoke with him last night, and um, I told him, Praise the living Jesus. Because um, it's on the break here, but it's also an assignment where he is. And in fact, he's doing more work than he would have done if he had been in Ibadan. So he sends his greeting, and um, he's here with us in spirit. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't mind me, I'm trying to gather my thoughts together. I, um, I've been struggling, so to say. To, to say something else, but I, I felt the Lord pressing upon me something that, uh, that is a little different from what I wanted to say. And um, I quit my struggle this morning. Praise God. <laughs> Praise the living Jesus. I quit the struggle and um, I'm yielding to that which. God, we want us to hear this morning. I want us to just take this song while we are still fresh. It dawned on me that the season is so filled with festivities all over the world that it's so easy to forget the essence. We are not doing celebrity giveaway, praise the Lord. For some people, it's a time to celebrate. But for most of those celebrating, they don't understand the essence or the reason why we are celebrating the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, you are the lion and the lamb, the word of the Father. You are the lion and the lamb, the word of the Father, forever you remain the same. Father, we thank you. We thank you for opening us to this reality. Thank you for forcing us to rejoice in this season, but not just as the world rejoices. Thank you for the works. Thank you for the perfection. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your faithfulness and your mercies that endure. We give you praise. We give you glory. We ask this morning that you will instruct us you will teach us, you will bring us to deeper understanding of your word, you will bring us to clearer revelations of this season, you will, you will be edified and you will be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed, amen. Oh, come on, you are sounding too... Help my ministry this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Let's start this morning from the book of John, chapter 10. That very popular passage of the Bible. John, chapter 10, verse 9. And we will stop at verse 11. John chapter 10. This is the word of Jesus. If this had not been the screen, this, this is red letter. Praise the living Jesus. I am the door. 
if anyone enters by me, he will be saved and we go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And this is why Jesus has come. Because we are celebrating that he came, we must also understand and keep in focus the reason why he came. And this is not somebody else telling us why he came here. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I have not just come for a life of survival. I have come for the fullness of life. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. And why is the shepherd giving his life for the sheep? So that the, the sheep can have a life. So if I want to tie to my message, you know that has always been a struggle. Is He came for you to have a life. He came for us to have a life. You know, there's this war when, when people are pissed off and they are trying to tell people off. They say, go get a life. Praise the living Jesus. How many of us, of course, you must have heard that word so, so many times. They tell, they just, you're pissing them off and they want to tell you off. That, I don't want to use some word, but at least there is this one I can use here. Go get a life. Praise the living Jesus. He came that we may have life. In verse 9, he said, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, if anyone enters by through me, if anyone gains access, enters into what? Gains access into what? If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. If anyone comes into this life or the life I have come to give. You know, there are several ways to get life. Praise the living Jesus. Sir. You know, that is the world we are living in. That is the life we are we living in. And we have been made to understand. And that was what I was trying to talk about on Thursday before Pastor Femi comes up. That the world is trying to paint a picture of what life is to us. But this morning, I want us to look from the scripture and see the picture of what the life that he came to give us is. Praise the living Jesus, sir. If anyone comes through me, because there is a kind of life that is susceptible to the destruction and the influence of the enemy. He said the enemy also come. I have come, but there is a system that is, that is in oppression. There is a system that is prevalent. And the essence or the goal of that force or that system is to steal, is to kill, and is to destroy and what is this system trying to kill? This system cannot give you life. This system cannot give you life. Even the natural life, this system does not have power to give. But he, this system or this force has a mission. I know many of us are wondering, what does it look like a Christmas message? Praise the living Jesus. I told you I had to quit my struggle. Praise the living Jesus. This system has no power to create one. It has no power to give life, but is so bent, is so hell bent on its mission to steal away from this life, and it would not stop there. He was so bent on this life, uh, on his mission to, to, to steal, to kill, and to destroy that which, because listen, the ultimate giver of life is God. We have advanced. There is 3D printer. So many things have been printed by 3D. But if there is anything that 3D has not been able to do, it has not been able to print life. The ultimate giver of life is God. And if God is the ultimate giver of life, God is the only one that has the best purpose and intention for every life. 
The only thing the forces of the world and the system of the world can do is to, is to use the life in a way that is not intended by the giver of life. Praise the living Jesus. So the enemy has come to steal, he has come to kill, and it has come to, to destroy. But I have also come. And I am not just giving a life of escape so that you can escape the killing and the destruction, but you are still open to the stealing. No, that is not what I've come to do. And I am not coming to stop what the enemy is doing per se. The way I want to stop that which the enemy is doing is to give you a life that the force of the enemy has no power over. Praise God. You know, when I say he came to, he came that you might get a life. There is a life here that this ministry of the devil naturally has power over. But there is a life with him that does not, the oppression of the enemy is just like Uh, um, I'm trying to look for a picture. I wanted to say it's like uh, they don't slap, but you know, some of those slap can be heavy at times. Praise the living Jesus. You know, I was playing on the bed. I was lying on the bed and I felt something hit my head. It was his head that hit my head. And lo and behold, the guy was just having fun. And I was still holding my head. I felt like I had to ask Valerie, did you hit my head? Said no, they don't need praise the living Jesus. So that, that, that might not be a very good uh, picture to paint, praise the living Jesus. But it's like a shadow, praise the Lord. Now, he, he wants to give you a life, well, except if Aye is involved. Even if Aye is involved, it shows that you don't like, have the life that he came that you may have. You understand what I'm saying? You can't say, a shadow slap you. That's what I'm saying. That if that awe has influence or control over the life of a man, he shows that that man does not have the life that he came that we might get. Because the way he wants to destroy the attacks of the enemy. Listen, God wants the enemy to continue to labor. But the labor is going to be fruitless. Because he has been defeated from the beginning. But he does not want to accept defeat. And God has no reason to tell him. Because, see, that judgment is past. This one is just passing time. But in its passing time, he wants to... To deceive many, like the scripture say, praise the living Jesus. So, the way to, to make his work or destroy his work is to make every of his labor without fruit. Praise God. Is to make every of his labor without fruit. Let's read the book of verse, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8 and 9. 1 John chapter 3. Verse 8 and 9. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Give me verse 9. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin. He does no longer respond to natural order. Praise the living Jesus. This is the way because he has been born of God. That certain things no longer has influence on him. Certain forces, certain, certain order does no longer operate with him. Listen, and if, if you think that the way God wants to destroy the works of the enemy 
is to make the enemy paralyzed that he will not do anything. It's not true. It's the ruler of this age. He will operate. But you can, you can be so fortified by the virtue of the life that you, has, you have been given that every of his operations has no power around you. Praise the living Jesus. And that's why he was saying to his, he said, listen, you are going to tread upon serpents and scorpions and they are not going to hurt you. It's not as if they are not going to sting, but they are going to do that, but that power is not going to have effect on you. Praise the living Jesus. Let's read the book of Luke chapter 8 verse 4. Because, listen, we have been we have been painted a very wrong picture. Luke 8 verse 14, sorry. Luke 8 verse 14. I thought the Amatan is here. That now the one that fell among thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with cares, with riches, and pleasure of life. The natural order. The order without the government of God. And bring no fruit to maturity. Now, the question is this. Should rich, riches choke? Normally. When you have You have rich wealth. The Bible did not say wealth. When you have money, should it shock you? Praise the Lord. Pleasure of this life. Cares. But do you know what? That is the normal, that is the, that is what this, this system offers. Praise the living Jesus. I saw a book, and the title of the book is, What Gets You Here Won't Take You There. Yes, sir. If God brought me here, God will take me there. But you know what the system of the world says? If you have been sleeping eight hours before you get here, you have to reduce your sleep to four or five hours. Because the way to get up there is more labor. But my Bible told me, said, for they got not the land in possession by their, by their own hand, neither did, by their own sword, neither did their hand save them. For your hand your right hand, for thou hardest a favor unto them. And you see, the natural order of this life, of this world, chokes naturally. You don't understand what here is, here is means. Give me, give, give, give me Luke chapter 12. The story of that rich, rich man. The Bible said that, that give, give me Luke 12 from verse 15. Luke 12. Now, the Bible mentioned in Luke chapter 8, 14, where we read, the first thing it talks about is cares, choke. And you know, the seed that we're talking about in that Luke chapter 8, verse 14, is the seed that brings about the life he came that you, will have, that you might have. Praise the Lord. So in Luke chapter 12, verse 15, and he said to them, take heed and beware of covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things that he possesses. It is not that a man does not 
you know, that this life does not give you possession, but if your identity and your meaning and your joy is derived from your possession, you don't have the life that we are talking about. Give me the next verse. We are reading through to verse 23. Oh, sorry, 21. Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do since I have no room to store my crop? Number one, did you understand how the crop came about? Did you understand how the harvest became bountiful? But do you know what the Bible mentioned in Luke chapter 8 verse 14? Cares. And many a times this cares is just for nothing. It's, 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 it's nothing that you have control over. You didn't bring about the bountiful harvest in the first place. The same way you planted is the same way several other people planted. That your ground brought forth bountifully, it's not of your doing. But you know what the word makes us to understand or to think is that, that your ground brought forth bountifully is because you are smart. Oh, come on, you are not. Uh, if, you have, if you have seen, yeah, have you seen some money Miss Road before? At times you look at them and you want to say, ah, God, we cannot say. We cannot say. Where's that? You know, there are some people like that. But the world wants to make you think that you are in charge, but you are not. So he said that we do this. I will pull down my pants and build greater. There's nothing wrong with it. God doesn't like waste. But sir, it can spoil in the barn many a times. And there I will store all my crops and my goods. Verse 19, we are going to 21. And I will say to my soul, this is where he meets me. And this life, you remember three things the Bible told us in Luke 8, chapter 14. It talks about cares. And it talks about pleasure. And I will say to my soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your his, eat, drink, and be merry. Merry Christmas. Take. But God said to him, fool. You see, one thing that this life does for us, or the system of the world tries to do from us, is to take God out of the picture and out of the equation. And the reason why Jesus came is for you to know that, listen, this thing is not by chance. It is not, it is not. One of the things I got angry the most with, with the most as a student in the university is when they said, when they were talking about the Big Bang Theory as the theory of creation, well, I had no problem. But when they came to the evolution of man and they said, they are higher anima, that thing disturbed me for months. I just feel like, can you, how can you look at yourself? But in the bid just to take God out of the equation, we come down to the lowest of the low, even to explain our own origin. We come to the lowest of the low. But God said to him, fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? Verse 21, the last verse we are going into. We are reading from here. Verse 21, please. Verse 21. So, he 
is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. See, what this system wants to do is to take him out of the equation. And my job this morning is to bring him back to its original place, which is the center of our life. Some of us, do, do, do you know why? Give me Matthew chapter 10, verse 39. Because there is something about life that they didn't, we, we fail to grab or we fail to understand. He who finds his life, we lose it. Do you know why? Life is not what you find. Life is what you are given. Trace the origin of life from the beginning, from Genesis chapter 1 and 2. Life is not what a man finds. Life is that which God gives to a man. He made man. He made, he made a statue. There is this place around um, Adama Singba. Have you, some of those statues, there are some in UI. That was what he made. In fact, what he made was not as strong as some of those statues we were, we were seeing there. But you know the only thing that made the difference in Genesis chapter 2, I think verse 7 there about, he said, and God breathed into the nostrils of man, and man became a living being. Man, God, God, God brought something into man, he introduced something into man that changes man from from dust to sharing image and likeness with God. Praise the living Jesus. So life is not what a man finds. Quit laboring to find this life. You, there is nothing in your hand, in your heart, in your expertise, in your wisdom, in your strength that can pull off the life we are talking about. There is nothing. There is nothing in you that can pull off this life. Ezekiel chapter 16 from verse 5. Let's take a look at Ezekiel chapter 16 from verse 5. Because many a times we need to go back to where God started with us. Because many a times we forget. We forget. He said indeed when it was whole, no object could be made. Sorry, Ezekiel chapter 16 from verse 5. He said no I pitied you. To do any of these things for you. To have compassion on you. But you were thrown out into the open field. When you yourself were loaded on the day you were born. This is the natural order. This is the, nothing gave you a chance. Forget, right? maybe some of the children we are having now, they have a chance for survival. Many of us, when they had us, the chance for survival was very slim. Less than 10%. Are you sure? No, it's not the one that happened when they give birth. Oh. All those ones that come and go and come and go. He doesn't have English word. Praise God. Dr. Jumoke, can you help me, ma? Thank, thank, thank God for science. The chance for survival, the chance to even that those that survive birth, the chance to live was very slim. You know how many children in Africa malaria still kills today? There is nothing in the system of the world that gives you a chance. Even all of this vaccine and vaccine they are celebrating is by the wisdom by which God gives. No, I pitied you to do you any of these things, to do any of these things for you, to have compassion on you, but you were thrown out into the open field when you yourself were loaded on the day you were born. Verse 6. And when I passed by you and saw you struggling in your own blood, I said to you in your blood, live. Yes, I said to you in your blood, live. Listen. It is, not, it is not your product. It is not the product of nature. It is what you are given by God. Even the natural life is what you are given by God. That's what I'm saying. And you know why God gave you the natural life? He gave you the natural life because he's bringing to you 
a higher order of life. That's why you survived the natural birth at first. That's why he gave you a chance. I said to you in your blood, live. Your blood could not save you. I need the blood of Jesus to save you. Your blood could not even prevent the natural life. The natural death. Praise the living Jesus. I said to you in your blood, life is not what a man finds. So stop laboring to find life. Life is what God gives. I said to you in your blood, live. And God is saying to somebody, you will live in the years to come. In the name of Jesus. Not just the natural living, but you will live supernaturally in the name of Jesus. God is saying to somebody again this morning, live in the mighty name of Jesus. To that which he has committed to your hands, live in the name of Jesus. No power of man can produce life. Let's, let's take a few scriptures. John 5, 26 and Acts chapter 17. Verse 25, John 5, 26. And take a look. Therefore, as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself. You are granted. See, I need to re-emphasize emphasize and re-emphasize to you. You are granted. The life you are living now is not because you are smart. Too. Some of us, we have scorned No, this kung fu that Psalm chapter 1 de de um, described, the blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. Many of us, ah, we were worse, but God gave you a chance. I remember as a, as a young chap, I was in my secondary school, my GSS. I saw a man by the roadside one day preaching. And I studied him so much. And I got home to my friends. You know, we'll, we'll leave school, not before closing our house. And go to a friend's house whose parents are not always at home. All the chicken on the street are in trouble. I know you were born again from your mother's womb. I wasn't. And that day, I remember the picture is very, very vivid in my mind. And I took a stool and a small seat, what it are. I don't know what that is called. You know what it are, Koti? And I put it together. And I took the track that this man was sharing. And I began to, to display, gesture the way he was doing. And the, the, we were all laughing. And I had to, I had to tuck in my shirt. I had to, you know, look for a tie, just pick a piece of clothes. And not too long after that, Deeper Life was having a retreat. And they made it open that some of us that does not want to stay in the camp, we can go and come back. So we got their program. We know when is breakfast. See, God just took a chance on so many of us. We were granted. He thought we were smart. And I will never forget one of the prayer, deeper life prayer that were answered, that were deeper, deeper life pastors in that branch, they was around Ogba, Ogba bus stop then, was praying a prayer that we know some of you. And they said some people are just coming to eat. And they said, no, 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 let them come. Said, but I assure you, you are not eating the meal of Jesus for free. I said, no. Praise the living Jesus. Come, come. We are not eating the meal of Jesus for free. I did every, I look at me, church. We were granted. We didn't find him. But the day I was granted, the day I saw it, I was in church. I don't know, I must have said, told that story here. 
I was in the church. My brother was in the um, Ibadan, uh, Polytechnic of Ibadan then, and he came home. And he said, he saw this church. Wow, let's go. They have a branch in Lagos, blah, 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 blah. And everybody says, yeah, yeah, we'll go to church. I wanted to prove everybody wrong that today I will go. I went to church that day just to prove men wrong. My shirt was so rumpled. I was wearing a short. I was wearing a sander just to prove everybody wrong. And I said to myself, before we enter, give me my transport fare. The deal is that Cheye cannot come to church. I have come. And I can leave any time. And God was so smart that I got converted before the main preacher came on board. The person to introduce the preacher just came on board and said, I want to bring up my father. The tragedy of a man. He did not even read the scripture. The tragedy of a man is not to die. But what dies in a man when he's still alive? I'm, I'm sure he must have been quoting one of his, you know, one of the things he read from a book. He said, I will go to, I'm, we're going to read the scripture open to the book of Nahum. I carried the Bible. As at that time, I was over 20. And there was a young chap beside me. That guy cannot be up to 15. They said, open to Nahum. The guy, you know, stood up while I started searching for Nahum. He came back. I was still searching for Nahum. And I said to myself, wow, there's no Nahum in my Bible. And I, lo and behold, I looked beside me. I saw this young chap. Just took the Bible. It's as if he has put a divider in Nahum. Poo, and just flip one or two pages. Pa. Pa. And something said to me, he said, you are dead. You are just alive. This thing the man of God said. How do you relate a young boy opening a Bible beside you? I don't go to church, but I just knew at this age I should know we were granted. Praise the living Jesus. See, some, no one knows we, see, we, some of us were on the path of death. It came that we may have a life. Even me, the way I was going, I knew before I was 40, uh, something would have happened. So reckless. And do you know what? Then, I thought that was the best of life that anybody could live. All those guys that were going to church, I thought they were fools. Praise the living Jesus. Let's see Acts chapter 17. I said it's going to be a short service. Acts chapter 17, verse 25 trying to emphasize to us that life is not what we find. Neither is life what man can preserve by himself. In another place, I think in the book of Luke 17, 33, he said, he that seeks to save his life. You don't just find life and you have no power to preserve this life. Because the life that he came for you to get has a system that runs it. And we'll look at a few things about that system. Nor is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything. Since, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. He gives to all life, breath, and all things. We can't, we can't pull it off. We cannot pull it off. But there are a few things about this life that I want us to look at. Let's read the book of Matthew chapter 7 verse 13 and 14. If it is not what a man can find and is not what a man can, can save or preserve, then how does this life run? How does even man get this life? How does man preserve or how is this life sustained? I want us to look at a few things and we will pray this morning. Matthew chapter 7 verse 13 and 14. Enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. What the enemy came for, remember in John chapter 10. And there are many 
who go in by it. Verse 14. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. This life has a unique access. It is not the not common access. It's not the broad access to life, the natural bed. It has a unique access. It has an access that regardless of how you get into this world, you get, regardless of your experience, there is an equal access to every man. That is sweet, the sweetest thing about this life. Everyone stands a chance at this life. Everyone. Where we read in Acts chapter 7, he said he gives to all. He gives to all life. Everyone has a chance at this life. Listen, the life I'm talking about this morning that Christ came that you may have is a life that you are not disadvantaged at. You are not disadvantaged. They forget, you know, some of the things they made us understand is education is everything. Education is important. Until we start seeing that Yahoo, Yahoo, get rich quick is everything. What the world told us we give you the advantage or the head in life seems not to be the advantage again. But listen, there is something about this life you have a shot at it, and you are never disadvantaged. It has a unique access. Let's read John chapter 3. That popular story of Nicodemus, John chapter 3, verse 1 to 6. John 3, verse 1 to 6. There was a man of the Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these things, these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom. Listen, the access to what I am doing is this. Come into this life. Listen, what I am doing I am displaying to you what you can do. I am displaying to you what becomes the natural order of your life if you come in. I am displaying to you the normal operations of the life. Praise the living Jesus. I am showing you what you are meant to be. I am, pat, pat, I am patterning for you what your life should be. I am not doing anything, but the only thing is that where you are living... And where I am, there is a unique access into it. And the access into this thing is that you must enter into this life. So Nicomus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Verse 5. Jesus answered, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Verse 6. That which is born of the flesh his flesh. He has a unique access that you are flesh, you are born of the flesh, you are qualified. Praise the living Jesus. It is not a disadvantage that you have had this experience, that you have been battered in this experience. There is a unique access to this life. So stop deceiving yourself. If you don't have this life, you know. It is not riches. That brings a man into this life. It is going through that which God has put in place. And that's why Jesus came. Because the month of December is so powerful. The money businesses make in one month. In fact, most businesses that have not broken even since the beginning of the year, if there is a December, unlike the pandemic December in recent years. Praise the Lord. They are sure. The economy that goes around the bed of Jesus. <laughs> so when you see the world celebrating, the world is not celebrating why he came. They are celebrating the economy surrounding his coming. 
And we must not get lost in that. There is a unique access to this life. And we cannot overemphasize the fact that there is a unique access. Praise the living Jesus. Let's jump to the next one. And this life has its own sustenance. This life has its own way of nourishment. It's not pleasure, just pleasure. Because the kingdom is not just in meat and drink. This life has its own sustenance. And but you know what? We want to be here, but we are still lured. By this is what comes to my mind, I will not say it. <laughs> Praise God. I don't know what he means, but I know it's popular on, on the internet. It's not by rolling with the big boys. This life has its own way of sustenance. Singing to yourself. <laughs> in psalms and in hymns. Singing to one another. Singing to the Lord. This is the way we nourish ourselves. You know, you know there's several ways that the world nourishes themselves and they get excited and you ask yourself, one of the things was, one of the songs when I was in the university was Colomenta. I don't know how anybody explained that music to you and you feel it's normal. Start the day. You know, so many of us, so many at times, I, 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 know, I know I'm old school, thank God. I'm old school. Where, well, sir? There's something wrong with this age. Let's still accept it. I don't. I don't know. There was one that came. You know, one money problem. <laughs> Even the traditional religious believer, they believe in confession. But you know what? Those are the ways the world nourishes and sustains themselves. You no, know, you know, ordinary high cannot. But let's look at how, how this life, the pattern or the, 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 the things in which God has put in place to sustain the life we are talking about. Let's take a look at Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. Don't open Matthew 4, 4. It's a very popular one. The man cannot live by bread alone. I don't know why. I'm, I think I've been watching so many of Instagram these days. So. Any money where I get like this. Don't worry about my future. My future is not going anywhere. Proof. But you can go somewhere before you get to the future. Amen. I'm, I'm just trying to bring to us. Listen, these things are subtle. But they are powerful. They look, they look harmless. They look like, you no, know, we are just talking. But I bet you we are getting at something. They are culturing something in us. They are driving something in us. They are driving us to certain things until you begin to feel it is normal just to go clubbing once in a while. I would not drink. Ah. <laughs> you know the problem? If they drink five bottles, I'll drink five, five bottles of mud. You are both drinkers. At the moment, it is only brand that is different. But I tell you, if you stay around for so long, you will join the brand. There is a way we nourish this life. There is, there is a system of nourishment and sustenance for our life. Let's read Isaiah chapter 55, verse 1 to verse 3. Isaiah 55. And you know what? The way to sustain that life is not free. Oh, everyone would test. Come to the waters. No, because something about this life is that you will always test. 
something about this life is that he opens something in you, but the only one that can fill that opening is God. Come, everyone that comes to the waters, and you who have no money. Remember I said, in coming into this life, you are not disadvantaged. In sustaining this life, you are not also disadvantaged. No terms can condition. The only terms and condition, follow the Lord. Come buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. It's not because it has no value. In fact, why you can't buy with money and with price is because the value you don't have, what to pay. There is no amount of riches that you have that can buy the test or the feeling of the testing of the soul. There is no amount of money you can have that can buy nourishment for your soul. There is no amount of money that you have that you can pay the price it takes to sustain the spirit. There is no amount of money you have that you can pay to sustain the assets you have to God. That is why he's calling us to bring no money and to have no price in our head. Because if he gives you the price, you can't pay. Only one price has been paid for this life and no other sacrifice can come close. And the price is paid once and for all. So you have equal access to this life. You are not disadvantaged. You are not. And the events of the past two years should have shown to you that you are not disadvantaged at all. In fact, you are at more advantage than the world thinks you are. In 2019, when the world was talking about coronavirus, you know what they said about Africa? We are not advanced. The only thing we know to do is to pray at least. If there is no other experience in your life that tells you that God answered prayer, coronavirus should tell you. Coronavirus should tell you. Have you been to some of those things they call primary health care centers? In you will not be sick. You will not. And if there is anything, see, this, this assets, and listen, we don't, we don't understand what we have by this life. I'm still looking for the idiots. I'm not sorry. I'm still looking for the idiots that will come and say, what is the church doing? If you have not seen the church done anything in recent years, the church pray the impact of coronavirus out of this nation, out of the continent of Africa. We're coming into the year and God gave a prophecy, the year of the black stars. It was not invention, though. It's just that the fact that God, it's not only God that can make a black star to shine. Because there is nothing in black that makes it shine. I know you'll be thinking about black diamond. Don't deceive yourself. Africa. Praise the Lord. There is nothing in us. So if there is anything, we can't. We don't have, the, we don't have what it takes. We don't. Earlier as of this morning, I was just trying to, I don't know, I was in the bit of struggle not to preach this message. So let me do something so that when I come back, you know, something else, I would have had a change of mind. And I was looking at the man of God that was, that was describing the two kind of thieves in Nigeria. He said, there is the normal thief that steals your phone, your money, your cars, that he steals natural, just properties. And he talks about the political thieves. He said the political thieves. You know, he talks about the political. Then he said the natural thief choose who to steal from. Or the small thief. They are just small, small thieves. You know, I, I, I can thief come to your house and they are carrying food. Those guys are just hungry. Seriously. I'm not saying it's good to steal. No. It's the ministry of the devil. We read in John 10. But he said the political thief We choose the political thief to steal from us. You know, initially I wanted to just be sturdy. I said, let me listen to this man. We choose the political thief to steal from us. He said another thing. He said, we fight 
the natural or the small thief fights when he's caught. The natural thief fights for the survival of his own life. He fights to save his own life. But do you know what? He said when the political thief is caught, he said we fight ourselves to keep him from stealing, to keep him to continue to steal from us. Why did I go all these routes? There is nothing in the black man to shine. It is only God that can shine through for the continent of Africa. We don't have money. We, don't, we can't pay the worth of this life. And that's why he made it open. Because if, that's, if, Jesus, if this scripture, Isaiah has written, and said, come buy with money and with price, it will go to the highest bidder. And I tell you, most of us don't stand a chance. 90% of Nigerians, I don't know if I don't know about any other nation I know of Nigeria, stand no chance. What do you spend? Why do you spend money for what is not bread? And your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good. And let your soul delight itself in abundance. There is a means of, let's go to verse 3. We are going to verse, verse 5. Or, yeah, we are going through to verse 5. Oh, don't worry, let's stop in three. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear and your soul shall live. You know one of the ways to sustain this life, to nourish this life? What we are doing this morning. And that's what God calls. He said, hear and your soul shall live. It's not injection. Hear and your soul shall live. What the world is celebrating today. Glad tidings of great joy to all humanity. It's something to hear and our soul to live. It's something to tell us that God has not forgotten humanity. It is something to, and these are the nourishment for this soul. It's not if you do I used to have somebody is still there on WhatsApp. Every morning, all the dailies in Nigeria, the newspaper, he sent. All the bad news. And it's so dutiful that he does it very early in the morning. And this is when I wake up and I just take my phone and I see the message, I'll get angry. So after a while, I said, no. I will wait till around 8. Before opening my, uh, you know, looking through my phone. With my phone now, how can somebody be, be I just blocked him off. See, if you look, maybe if you look elsewhere, even in the world, open to CNN today, if they say breaking news, it's always bad news. Here. When I was thinking about the news, you know, the happenings recently, you know, especially the past few weeks, that, you know, so many, you know, secondary schools were just in the news. So many horrible stories from about secondary schools, from secondary school students in the news. And I remember a, a quote. I can't remember exact. I can at least paraphrase it. And in that same, I was listening to a radio program. And as sad as those events are, the presenters were laughing. Comedy about some of these things on online. And I remember a quote I, I saw, I heard. That what first comes to a people as tragedy. If nothing is done to stay with the people as comedy. That exactly was the story of this nation and the story of the world we are living in. 
how many things has happened at first. Can you remember the first time church bombing in Nigeria happened? What was your reaction? Hello? Hello? Can you look back? I remember the first time you heard of kidnapping and killing. You know, when you heard of kidnapping, you don't look at the ransom, even if they release the people. You look at the torture. But when you hear kidnapping today, do you, do you know what? What came as a tragedy is ending up as a comedy with us. Praise the living God. But at the short of this life, please, in time you're here, there is something day, day by day. God, God is not, God knew so many of the things that we we'll face daily. Recently, something happened. It looks a funny story. I woke up that day and something just came to my mind like I just felt like just be calm with your driving today. Just, just not, you know, driving up. Just be calm. Just okay. We stepped out of the house. I was dropping the kids off in school and just the junction of my house just getting out of the street to link the main road. The guy that was, he didn't know whether to turn right, whether to turn left, like standing in the middle of the road, trying to take a decision. And Valerie asked to join the school bus from Zoe School. So I was running late. I just felt like, okay, guy, guy, be running. And Zoe looked up and said, Daddy, are you talking to me? I said, no, 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 no. I was, I was not talking to you. I was talking to the radio. I didn't want to tell, want to tell her I was talking to, to another motorist. I drove off. I dropped the kids off in school. And I was about coming out of their school. And I was standing. I wanted to link the major road, the road that goes to Idiakwe. I was, I was not rushing. I was trafficating. I was standing there waiting for the good time to to just move fast, uh, to join the road. And I saw a car coming, and the person was just doing like this. I saw the hand, the person doing like this. And I just said like, what did I do? Are you Paul? Are you Paul? And lo and behold, he was Paul and Harry. And the boys came to me again and said, I told you this boy. Oh, King Boro. You know, after, you know, I have said this, I just like, are you... Uh, Before I saw it, when I saw it was Paul, I picked my phone. I said, ah, Paul, what's wrong with you now? You should have given me, away, given me the road now. I said, ah, Pastor, that one is just... You know, see, it sounds funny. But God has a way of, of just setting our day and setting our mood for the day. That is the order of this life. So, so what's the evening? You know, I went to Dubai and I was closing in Dubai that evening. So when I was going to, to the car, that, okay, I'm, I'm done for the day. Okay, what do I do? Pick the kids. Or I got to the car, and I remember the, the events that happened with, with Paul. And I laughed. You know, I just laughed. It, and I said, and I said to myself, that, no, no. For the rest of today, even if anybody is saying anything, I will not just talk. If you like, park your car in the middle of the road. Mm. So I left the parking lot where I was, the parking lot here, and there's the road just on the other side of the fence. So I came out of the gates to the road. It's a one way. I am on track. And there's this car coming in front of me. Hmm. When I saw the guy, they're like, ah, hey, I told myself I was not going to talk. You know, he's going on one way. And you know, the guys by the road, unknown to me, that in that car was a soldier. Lord, no go shame us. 
Now I knew. No, no, not that anything had happened. Uh, anything, uh, nothing happened. But me, that time of the day, I was so stressed. And it was a very stressful day. I would just stay there and not allow the guy to pass. No, you are, you are, you are wrong. You will go back. I just look at him like, maybe this guy didn't know that he's on the wrong path. Though. And the guys by the roadside, I noticed that they were just saying, go back, one way, go back, one way. Ah, German, German. Oh, of course, most of my customers are in that market. I was like, what? When I leave him, I just moved out of the road for him and rolled down, waiting for him to get to me. And when the guy came to me, I was like, ah, thank God. You know, I said to him, I said, sir, this is a one way. And you need to see how sorry this man was. For if I had raked, I had parked, at the end of the day, if it was a policeman, maybe he would not have moved. But you know, the way, I said, sir, this is a one way. You're on the right track, on the wrong track. Yeah, I, I never knew. This is my first time. He started confessing. This is my first time in this market. I never knew. I'm sorry. I can't. If I said, no, 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 no. I felt cool. It was God that helped me. Now, what I'm trying to say to us is that, listen, there is a way God nurtures this life. The end result at times may not be tangible. But listen, that day, I felt that God has been preparing me for this minute since I woke up today. And such is the nourishment of the, about this life. If, there is, if you truly are focusing and following this life, very few things will catch you on our ears if there is any. It is a life that you are not left to your own to spend for yourself. You are not. It is a life that is sustained by God himself. It is a life that God, listen, God is concerned about every detail about this life. And in the, I think in the, it was in the book of Luke, he was saying, he said, take no thought. Take no thought for your life. Take no thought for your life. Seek first. If you seek me, what you are going into, you have nothing, you have no clear about it, but if you seek me, I can give you the blueprint. Such is the sustenance of this life. Such is the detailed interest of God as concerning the life he has come that you may get. It is not a life that is left to chance. No. It is not a life that is left to chance. It is not whatever we be, we be. Listen, it is not a life that is, you are not in dark. God has plans for your life, regardless of what your experience has been in 2021. The thoughts that I have for you they are thoughts of good and not of evil. They are thoughts of good. And listen, we have how many days to the end of the year? God still does miracle. I've heard of 24 hours miracle. Seven, one week miracle is too big a time for God to fulfill his word in your life. Too big a time for God to fulfill his word. God sustains this life. It's not the natural life. In the book of Deuteronomy, he was sent to Israel. He said, the land which you are going to unite, the land which the Lord your God promised to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, is unlike the land of Egypt where you are coming in from, where you plant your seed with your foot and water it by yourself. The land and the experience I'm bringing you into is the land that drinks of the rain of heaven. It's the land on which the eyes of the Lord is upon it from the beginning of the year. To the end of the year. It is not a life that you are left alone. Not a day of your life. Not a day. Not a day. Forget what you have been told. God wants your money. Seriously? <laughs> I enjoy saying God wants your money. If you hear what unbelievers give to God at times, and they give it codedly, you, should, you will be ashamed for holding on to the 
is it fallacy? To the deception. You know, the, the church just wants is your money. In, 21, 21, in 2020, what kept so many of us together was the word of God. What's the word of God? You, many, you know how many times you have thought that this is the end. And God says, the power of the endless life. And you, you, you hold on to it. You think it's just small. Go and read the motivational book and see if he has the same power. I read a lot. At times when I read some of those books, I just feel like, well, let me not say I've wasted my money, but let me look for one thing. Just one thing. Because many a times you look at some of these, some of these releases, majority, especially Nigerian authors, I'm sorry, majority. How can you say you write a book? The book is 100 pages. And you took scriptures. I'm not saying scriptures are not good. And you took scripture. If we count the number of pages that scripture, you quote scriptures, not one one. You quote word. You put the letter in the book. It takes about 30 pages. And you say your book is 100 pages. You are lying. Yes. Many of them is just for survival. But this life has a way of sustaining itself. And the sustenance does not come from man. You remember the story of the blessings of Joseph. He said, he said by the God of your father, we will help you. It's not, it's not a life that you are left to your own. You are not left to your strength. And that's one of the things that sustain this life. You are not left to your wisdom. You are not left to your own. You are, you are not just left to your own impute alone. All of the time you are left to divine impute from God. This life is so deep. It's sustained by nothing in the natural. Even the access into the life itself is not natural. For he that is born of the flesh is flesh. But he that is born of the spirit is spirit. If the access is not natural, the sustenance cannot be natural. We are so concerned about our lives. Say because you don't have a job. You that you will see, you will see work and you will tell God, can I just retire at 35? You know, when I left Abuja, I came, went to Lagos. I wanted, all I just wanted was, I just needed something. I came to Ibadan. Seven years I've been on a fish. In fact, recently I was talking to someone. I said, I look at myself. I said, I, I'm beginning to look more like a footballer. See you. In about six years, I've had three jobs. I've had three jobs. The first one, contract expired. The second one, I did a transfer. The third one, I did a transfer. And very, very likely, but the possibility is very high. By the time the January window, the January window transfer, transfer window will close, I will also do another transfer. And this was a guy that when I was looking for a job, age was not on my side. I'm telling you. It just dawned on me that my wife would say, it is me that wants a change of job. It is you that is getting job. It just dawned on me. And if you ask me how, I've never sold before. When they say it's sales job that is available, well, let's take this one. It was not the easiest of job. I was not selling rice. You know, people will eat. Whether they have money or they don't have money, they will eat. I sell electronics. And the volume or the value I sell in months, in a month, is more than the people selling rice. I'm telling you. It's more than the people selling rice. This was a job that I had no clue about. I have now become... You know, I'm now moving from one club to another. Because that's what, that's what it seems like. This life has its own sustainer. There's nothing the world understands. Because every time you want to apply, and look, I say, 
say, we must, you must have 10 years of experience and you must not be more than 26. Did you start working from the womb? So, so I stood no chance. And the day I went for the interview, I was talking about Jesus. The guy who interviewed me was talking about Gandhi, and I'm saying, no, you can't compare Jesus and Gandhi. I'm looking for a job. I forgot that I was in an interview. And you know what the guy said? He said, I like your confidence. The way you are talking. Someone would have not been, you know, you are, would have been lost. He would not have said his conviction. He would not have given, given his opinion. I, I, and to be sincere, I forgot. When it came to the question of Jesus and Gandhi, uh, bros, you can't place them on the same pedestal. They are different. Different. How can they ask you in interview, would you consider, consider the greatest leader of all time? And you say it's Jesus. And you are talking to a man who happens to be an Hindu. Hello? Live life as his own cost. The day I got to know that that guy was not a Christian, I, I was ashamed. I felt like, what? This guy should be a Christian. Praise the Lord. Listen. Forget what the system of the world has told you. Your life in God is secure. If you don't know, if you don't believe before, some of us that works at our market, Michael, all through last year, we are always going to the market. No mask, no nothing. You think there were no coronavirus in Ibadan? Your life in God is secure. And you must allow that sink into you. And that's the life it came that you may have. Praise the Lord. The life has its own sustenance. Let's read um, John chapter 4, verse 13 and 14. John 4, verse 13 and 14. Don't worry. I think about two or three more points and we'll be out of here. I didn't say three minutes. Eh? Two or three more points. Praise God. Thank God I quit my struggle. John chapter 4. You remember the story, the Samaritan, Samaritan woman um, and Jesus by the way. So Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water we test again. There is a water the world presents to us. There is a water this natural life gives things to fish. But do you know what? You will test again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never test. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. This life has a sustainer. This world you are interacting with on a daily basis. He has a strong power. How many times have you found your, yourself in situations? My God shall provide all of my needs according to his riches. What should be the normal order? Hello, uh, Yinka. Joshua Mori, thank you. Come back. But do you know what? This life, this water that you are drinking is springing. It's springing. Many a times unconsciously, but this water is becoming a spring already. If every time things happen to you or things happen around you, and the only way you look out for is in the natural, yes, sir. Hey, mommy. Hey, mommy. Recently, just noticed that. Almost everybody in my house was were treating malaria like every two, two weeks. And one day my, my, my wife just <laughs> I was just looking at that. Like, what happened to the malaria? Kilo shelle. Just like, ah, me, I'm tired of all this. I'm tired of this, all this malaria. And she just took the kids in. <laughs> Laid hand on them, began to pray. You know, at another time I saw her taking anointing oil and putting on everybody. And I was laughing, even brought to my head. I was putting it. It sounds funny. But do you know why? 
This water is springing. This is not our natural order. We shouldn't be falling sick every two, two weeks. We should not be falling sick. Listen, the life I'm giving to you, you must begin to think your thought pattern is not from here. It's from here. And we must be conscious of this. That is what Christ came to do. He came to give you this kind of life. That thinks and live above the natural order. That is what he came for. It's not rice and chicken. So we eat rice. Amen. Before, before they now use my word against me at home. <laughs> Praise God. We will be coming in a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Let's read one more scripture. Luke chapter 12. Verse 23 to 31. Luke 12. Verse 33. 23, sorry, to 31. Life is more than food. And the body is more than clothing. Consider the ravens for they neither sow nor reap, which have neither storehouse nor barn, and God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by worrying, can hand one cubit to this stature? If you then are not able to do the least, why are you anxious for the rest? Consider the lilies. You know, it talks about the feeding. Then he moves fast. Because you will say, he's done, the only thing is that he's done his sustenance. You know? Now, only what he go to eat. God has other things covered as well. Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. He was not clothed. He was not beautified. If then God so clothes the grass, which today is in the field, he doesn't have any eternal, eternal role in the purpose of God. And tomorrow is thrown into the oven. How much more will he clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? Verse 30. And do not seek what you should eat or what you should drink, nor have an anxious mind. For all these things the nations of the world seek after, and your father knows that you need these things. Even the the, the minutest details of your need, God knows. God knows. The fact that you, I'm not going to allow you to go naked. Are we beautiful? He didn't just say, I just clothed them. He told us how beautiful the arraignments their are. I'm not just trying to cover a nakedness for you. I am trying to make you look beautiful. I'm trying to make glory shine forth from you. Such is the sustenance that is planned for this life. Praise God. And the next thing is that this life has its own light. And listen, we can't operate by the way the world operates. There is a system and there is a wisdom in God that we must begin to operate by. Because this is the, this is the contradiction as I found many a times. That we want to hold on to the life, but we want to walk by the light of the world. We want to hold on to this life. But we want to walk in the ways of the world. We want to esteem the words of God very lightly. We want to, we want to stand by God who helps only those who help themselves. He's not in the Bible. God helps those who cannot help themselves. If you can help yourself, why do I need to help you? Let me save my help for those who need it. We, we, can, we, can, we, cannot, we can't serve God and mammon together. If we are going to live this life, we must operate by the wisdom of this life to get the full benefits of this life. This life has his own light. He has his own wisdom. He has his own counsel. 
One of the things that was spoken about Jesus, the prophecy of the Messiah in the book of Isaiah 11, he said, he said, the spirit of God, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of mind, the spirit of wisdom. There is a counsel that is peculiar to this life. It's not common. There is a wisdom. Listen, this life brings wisdom. It irradiates wisdom. It's one of the things that show forth that you have partaken of this life is that the wisdom of God shows forth from you. If you feel in areas of your life you are still making decisions that you are not proud of, you are making decisions that you know this cannot be the best of God for me, ask because this life has its own light. If the only way you are looking for a guy is TDH, can be tall, Dark, he can be handsome, and he can also be a boxer. This life has its light. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. As long as I am in this world, I am the light. This life has its own wisdom. Jesus has his own shine. He has his own glory. Jesus has certain things that you are proud of. Integrity is something to be very proud of. Every time I go for a job interview, I talk about my job. I keep telling people. Because my kind of job is the kind of job that you can, you can hold on people's behalf. And it is so funny that when things like that happen, hardly have I seen probably people prosecuting the worst, maybe at times, the whole salary and ask you to go, blah, blah, blah. If you want to make quick money, oh, come on. You can. Well, sir, I am not hopeless. If God will give me 100 billion in a few years from now, and I want to steal some 2, 3 million now, does it make sense? It doesn't. But do you know why I can think that way? Because I know in this life there is a plan. There is something ahead of me. And I know it's big. Oh, come on. I said it's big. I, can't, I, tell, I tell them, I say, see, 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 two things I can offer you. And, and tell you, I believe in the dignity of labor. I love to work. I will work to the best of my ability. And I will do it with integrity. I say it anywhere. I say it anywhere. And you know what? Till today, it still sells. Don't let anybody tell you that be wise. It's not wise. You are, you are just being a thief. There's no other way to put it. You are just being a thief. Integrity sells. That you can walk into anywhere and with any, you don't know, into any place you have been before with your head high. Wow, for me, it's a thing of pride. Oh, come on. I love it. You will not see call. I, you have to change number to call me. No. I don't have to call out my phone. I'm not going you. Yes, I don't need to spy. If you call me, I don't have your number. I'm sorry, I don't have your number. You don't have my number. Yes, I don't have your number. What says what rules or what law says I must have your number? No. Am I keeping a number on my phone for three years? I've not called. I need the phone memory to work. I need it to be light so that my the phone speed can be good. If you feel I'm rude, I'm sorry, I'm not. Integrity sells. This life has its light. The light of this life is righteousness. The light of this life is right standing with God. The light of this light is that men will see your good works and glorify God. This life has its light. It has its wisdom, not the wisdom of the world. Not the wisdom of the world. We are trading to our seven voices because we want to talk to seven people and impersonate seven people. 
only one voice. Praise God. His life at his time. John chapter 1, uh, chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. Let's just see what, what that says. John chapter 1. Now the word of the Lord says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. I think I'm going, let's, let's read it. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Verse 5. And the light shines in darkness, and darkness did not comprehend it. This life has a light that diffuses every darkness. As a light. If you are a man of your word, I tell you, people may not like your face. But when they need to make certain decisions, see, if I have a fine guy that, and I, that, you know, I like his face, he's, you know, he's just funny, he's blah, 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 and I need to make business decision or crucial decision about my life, will I go for a guy that we know I'm secure with whatever investment I'm doing? Or a guy that I, I won't go to a doctor who does not even know how to, you know, where to put injection. Because I just, I just like his style. The guy is cool. You know, he's just cool. He's just cool like that. <laughs> he will cool you to death. You will go for someone that you are sure. You know the light of this life? The world knows. They can't comprehend. You know, they will, they, they are, you know why they are mad at the light of this life? It's not because they don't like the light. It's because they can't walk in that light. Not because, see, they don't have anything wrong at a point in Nigeria when you are employing people and you want to employ people to man your accounting and finance department. They go to people in the church. In fact, I've had stories that they say, go, go and look for people that attends deeper life, or go and look for Christians. They can be stealing, but they know their money will not be stolen. What is the light? They, they love the light of this life. They know it. And do you know what? Some of the things that is still preserving our nation and most system of the world today is the light that the, that the light that the church is shining, shining upon the face of the earth. This is the light of this life. Let's read um, again John chapter 8, verse 12. I will take John 8, verse 12. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me cannot walk in darkness but have the light of life. He will follow us because this is what I came to pattern. If you walk according to pattern, if you step into these shoes that I am stepping into, you will have the light of life. You will have the light of life. There is somebody around me. Every time he needs to make decision, he comes. Just say, ah, guy, this is what's happening. What do I do? What? And he always make a mess. He makes very stupid decisions. Until Pastor was speaking recently, I don't understand. It was, I think it was about two weeks ago, or last Sunday. That guy, it's not as if he's viewed that he's wise. Old. It is God that is helping. If it had not been the things that God has exposed so many of us to, our decisions would have been worse than some of those we saw. We are condemning. It would have been worse. Every time he will come and say, guy, we put him through. And recently I, I looked at him. I said, you go to church. I said, yes. I won't mention the church in which we attend. Praise the Lord. But when he, 
No, I, are you a Christian? He said, yes. Do you go to church? He said, no. He said, no, no one. Listen, there is, you, can, you cannot be, if, 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 if the experience is not what it is, please check it. It is not the life, it is not the sustenance of this life, it is your response to that which God is bringing your way. Because you have access to it without cost, without price. He has his own, he has his own light. And the next thing I want to talk about is that this life has his own rule. And this life has its own work. Let's read the book of Judges chapter 13. Judges chapter 13, I think it was, um, yeah, before the birth of Samson. Judges chapter 13, we'll read verse 9 to 14. It's not a lawless life. It's not a life that says, come, come as you are and stay the way you want. No. It's a life that will be, you, you will be cultured. You will keep your body under sub- subjection. It's a life where you will be trained. Why am I saying this to us? So many of us will be looking at how did Isaiah chapter 9 and all this comes together. One of the things that the Bible talk, told us in the book of Isaiah chapter 9, don't, don't go to Isaiah 9, Isaiah chapter 9 where we did for Bible reading. In verse, in verse 6, said unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given. And uh, it said, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. One of the things that government does for a people or for a nation or a territory is that government make rules and order. Government secures territory. They mark the boundaries and ensure peace. Both internally and externally. Governments make rules. They make the principles and create the environment that guides and contributes or order every other activities in that domain. So everything that needs to be in place for this life to be self-governed and self-sustained is resting upon the shoulder of the Lord Jesus. I am the wall. I am the bread that came from heaven. One of the sustainers of this life we have spoken about is the proceeding word of God. And God listened to the voice of Manoah, and the angel of God came to the woman again as she was sitting in the field, but Manoah's husband was not with her. Verse 10. And God, verse 10. Then the woman ran in haste and told her husband and said to him, Look, the man who came to me the other day has just now appeared to me. Verse 11. We are going through to verse 13. Or to verse 14, sorry. So Manoah arose and followed his wife. When he came to the man, he said to him, Are you the man who spoke to this woman? And he said, I am. Verse 12. Manoah said, Now, let your word come to pass. For because this life does not just sustain us, does not have sustenance without order. Your word will come to pass, but there is something we need to inquire from you what will be the boy's rule of life and his work? What will be the manner, the order of this life? Because the life that the angel came to introduce to Manoah is not just normal. He is a child that the angel came to announce his birth. And the angel also spoke about the order of the life of that man. In fact, because of the virtue of the life of that boy, the carrier of the boy in the womb, his life is subjected to a certain order. Verse, verse 13. What will be the boy's rule of life and work? So the angel of the Lord said to Manoah, Of all that I said to the woman, let her be careful. Verse 14. She may not eat anything that comes from the vine, nor may she drink wine or similar drink, nor eat anything unclean, all that I commanded her, let her observe. 
true that you are looking for a new room of righteousness. <laughs> I have good news from you for you. All that is commanded is observed. There is no new rule. All this question of once we are saved now, we can be saved forever. Yes, sir. There is a way to live even though you are saved. His life has a way. He has a way of life. He has a rule of life. He has works. The book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. Give me Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. He said, for, for we, are, we are his workmanship. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. Which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. There is a pattern even of works and order of life for you. This life is not anyhow. When I was in the university, there was a program that was held. I won't mention the name of the group. I remember the name of the group. I had a friend who was a member of the group. I don't know if such groups still exist on campus today. And the theme of the program was praising God anyhow. Yeah? Isaac, I don't know if you remember that program. The theme was praising God anyhow. And by the following morning, we saw the effect of a people who praise God without order. Chairs were broken. The field where they had the program, you know, so many, you know, parks of Belebe. Samuel is the only person that understands that language. Praise the living Jesus. Empty parks of Kwelebe. You know what Kwelebe is? You know, see, I'm still born again. But you know, when you have to walk in and around Dube Market, practically every day of the week, you cannot, you cannot shut your ears to certain things. So those are some of the languages you're hearing. So it's not getting to my soul. Praise God. Let's read the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 27 and 28. Just to emphasize again that this life has rules, it has works, it has a manner, it has its own order. For you will not leave my soul in head. Nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. Verse 28. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of joy in your presence. And you know what? The rules of life or the ways of this life is not easy. Except you want to close your eyes to it. Of all that I've commanded, tell her to observe. I've not written to you a new commandment. I'm not writing a new commandment. The order for righteousness and holiness remains the same. You know, there are not two ways about certain things. It remains what it is. You know, when people want to do their own way, they have a way of turning the head, you know, the scripture upside down. You know, years ago, I had, I had a girl, you know, a young lady in the university, and I think I left Akuba, and she was still on campus. You know, I went visiting one of those years, and, you know, we struck this friendship, and she became very close. She was, I think she was in her 400 level, and she looks like a, a, pre, a pre-degree student. And wow, she was brilliant. She graduated from law. Um, law department. And we got close and we were talking one day. I won't mention name. Yeah? I mentioned law. She's not the only one in law department. So Isaac, is, you, are, you are listening too much. Praise God. <laughs> so, you know, we got talking one day and she told me about this guy. You know, once she first told me about the guy who was close and, you know, trying to, they are doing some Bible study. I don't want to be like, this is your guy who is doing Bible study. Why 
are you? I'm not sure this guy himself knows the Bible. What? But I'm not God. Let's just give you some time. And they did Bible study to a point. And the brother was actually, by revelation, trying to sleep with the poor girl. And what did she say? Listen, listen. We, we, must, we must come. Why am, I, why am I bringing this in? We must, we must understand. He said a new commandment. That he has his own, he has his order. He has his own rule. He has his own law. And I, I deliberately emphasize that all that I have commanded, let her observe. Because in the bid to look for something new, a lot of people have been lost. A lot has been deceived. And the, the, let me not say what I said after that. Guy. I called them. I said, give me this guy's number. If, if I ever see you, God, if I, not God has judged, God, God, will judge, God has judged you now. Because what? This life has its rules. Remember where we read that the road to this life is very, very narrow. The gate is narrow. And the road, it is difficult. We are not telling you it is going to be easy. But, yes, sir, it is the surest path to life and the abundance of life. I don't know why I have to say it to convince you, but it is the surest path to life itself and to the abundance of that life. Praise the living Jesus. Let me give one more. I'll keep the rest to myself. The last thing I want to talk about is that this life has its loss. Has its loss. In the book of Corinthians, chapter 5, it says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. It is a law. It is a law. Say, 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 God, call those things that be not as though they were. And those things came to be. It is a law of our life. It is not the to stop trying to disprove what the world believes. If you are in here, that is the order of your life. Recently, I was living, listening to Bishop Oyedebo. Corona Delta variant. We banish you from this continent. Pray. You need to, you need to see the way. What did you watch? Silo. This this yes, Silo. 
Tom was talking about the interview. I think it was Pastor Femi was talking about the interview Pastor Kou, Reverend Kumi had with, with some media people, and they were asking him about the impact of coronavirus. See, they were not speaking by, you, you think they don't believe in science. But do you know what? They believe in a different order of life. This life has its laws. The lateral law says when the clean touch the unclean, the, the, the clean becomes unclean. In the laws of this life, when the clean touch the unclean, the unclean become clean. And that is why God has so much equipped you that your life can impact on the life of unbelievers. That is why somebody that you know, that knows you and know nothing about you, you can look at them and begin to pray for you. That is why you can stand in gap for people who are not even taking their cases to God and yet God is answering their prayers. You know what? It is a law in this life. Let's read Romans chapter 8, verse 1 to 3, and maybe verse 11. Then we'll close from John chapter 14. Romans chapter 8, verse 1 to 3. Very quick. It said, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk. Remember the fourth part we talk about, that this life has his rules, his way, his order, and his walk and works. According to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death, which is the natural law. Listen, you may appear a natural law, a natural man, but what governs your life, if you are in here, is not natural. Verse 3. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, on account of sin, he condemns sin in the flesh. You are living under a different law. Remember, we just do laws in Nigeria. We don't know how to interpret it. I'm sorry, Pastor Yinka and the likes. But we don't know how to interpret it. You see, federal government tells a, a state government to set up a panel of inquiry into what happened at Lekki. And uh, who happens to be a son and a minister of the same cabinet is coming out to say what the federal government and even in co the constitution permits the state to do is unconstitutional. I don't know how those people became son. I'm sorry. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> this life has its law. And it's not a natural law. Let's read verse 11 of Romans chapter 8. I love, oh, I love this scripture. Verse 11. But if the spirit, but remember in verse 2 of Romans chapter 8, he said, he said, if the spirit of life, he said, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead, we also give life to your mother bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. The regulator of that law, the harbinger of the law of this new life is the spirit of the living God. This law has its own law. This life has its own law. It's, we don't, we don't, we don't, you, you are not, this, 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 it, it, is, it is a supernatural law. You are not just governed by a natural law. You live in a natural world, but your life is governed by the spirit of the living God. The CPU of this system is from above. That didn't sound like a quotable quote. Ah. Praise God. And just to say to us, see, you are not ordinary. Don't get lost. Don't get trapped in the natural experience and forget the fact that you have a divine order that is guarding us, controlling the events of your life. Remember, Pastor Femi told us on Thursday, God rules in the affairs of men. And you know what? The order, this law at times is not just, if this law needs to affect every other thing around you, it will. It will. How can you demote a king for thinking, is this not Babylon which my hand has built? In this law, he raises and abases some order. In this law, 
He makes the poor and give them a place among the mighty. In this law, he makes ways where there is no way. In this law, none shall be barren. The laws that govern this life say this, even though your beginning may be small, we may not be able to plot the graph, but your greatness is sure. These are the laws that govern this life, so don't let us be lost. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 9, and we'll read John chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 9. You know, we've had experiences in John. This is how God introduced this order of life. Isaiah chapter 9 from verse 1. The Bible, we, the Bible reading we took this morning, Isaiah 9 verse 1. But nevertheless, can I have it in the Amplified Version? Can we have it in the Amplified? But in the midst of judgment, there is the promise and the certainty of the lost deliverance. And there shall be no gloom for her who was in anguish. Listen, here the, I'm, I just want to prophesy before going to the six. This is what the Lord of, word of the Lord was. Said, there shall be no gloom. He's not speaking in the past. He's speaking in the years ahead of you. No matter what the experiences you have had in this year, hear the word of the Lord. There's not going to be gloom ahead of you in the name of Jesus. Oh, come on, I thought you'd say louder, amen. He said, in the midst of the judgment, in the midst of judgment, there is the promise of certainty of the Lord's deliverance. The deliverance of the Lord will come to you like never before. In the mighty name of Jesus, sir. Oh, come on. The deliverance of the Lord will come to you like never before. In the mighty name of Jesus, sir. Every gloom and anguish is taken away in the name of Jesus, sir. Every gloom and anguish is taken away in the mighty name of Jesus, sir. The Lord will make your life glorious in the name of Jesus, sir. The Lord will make your life glorious in the name of Jesus. Give me verse 2. He said, they that sit in darkness, the people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Who those who dwell in the, in, the, in the land of intense darkness and the shadow of death. Upon them as the light shined. One of the things we were told about this life is that this life has its light. You will experience the light of the life he brought in the mighty name of Jesus. Every darkness in your life in the year 2022 is given way to the light of God in the name of Jesus. I said every darkness gives way in the mighty name of Jesus. Every darkness gives way in the name of Jesus. You are not permitted to live in darkness. In any area of your life, the light of God will shine in the name of Jesus, sir. The light of God will shine in the mighty name of Jesus, sir. The light of God will shine in the mighty name of Jesus, sir. The Lord will multiply you in the year to come. The Lord will multiply you in the year to come. You will be increased greatly. You will be increased greatly. Your joy will increase in the mighty name of Jesus, sir. You will rejoice because your harvest will be bountiful. In the mighty name of Jesus, sir. You will rejoice for your harvest will be bountiful. In the mighty name of Jesus, sir. You will rejoice because you will divide the spoil with the great. In the name of Jesus, sir. Listen, when you divide the spoil, it shows that you have taken part of a battle and you have won. You don't get spoils when you have not won the battle. You will win every battle in the name of Jesus, sir. You will win every battle in the name of Jesus, sir. For the yoke, every yoke will be broken in the mighty name of Jesus, sir. Every yoke will be broken in the name of Jesus, sir. Every burden will be lifted in the mighty name of Jesus, sir. Every burden will be lifted in the name of Jesus, sir. Every staff of oppression and oppressors sir, will be taken away from your life in the mighty name of Jesus, sir. Every staff of the oppressor will be taken away in the mighty name of Jesus, sir. Give me verse 5. Let me quickly rush. For every shambling warrior's boot and his hammer in the battle tumor of every garment road and blood shall be for burning as well for the fire. You know what? One of the scriptures, what this place is saying, is God will bring certain battles to an end. The Bible told us, I think it was in the book of Psalms, he said, he makes wars for sins to the hands of the heart. I speak over your life. Every battle that is not necessary, the Lord bring an hands to them in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord brings an hands to every unnecessary battles. In the name of Jesus, sir. 
and the order of your life comes under the influence of God in the name of Jesus. There will be order. I said this, the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. You will not lack counsel in the years ahead. Oh, come on, come on, come on. You will not lack counsel in the mighty name of Jesus, sir. He said, you will come to a point you don't know whether to go right or left. You will hear a voice behind you saying to you, hearing is the way, walk there in it. The counsel of God will come to you with clarity in the mighty name of Jesus. Sir. The counsel of God will come to you with clarity in the mighty name of Jesus. Sir. You will enjoy the peace of God like never before in the mighty name of Jesus. Sir. You will enjoy the peace of God like never before in the mighty name of Jesus. Sir. Give me verse, five, verse 7. Verse 7. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end. The Lord will grant you endless peace in the name of Jesus. Sir. Oh, come on. The Lord will grant you endless peace in the mighty name of Jesus. Sir. He said, Peace I give to you. My peace I live with you. Not as the world gives. The Lord will give you his peace. Sir. The Lord will give you his peace. The Lord will give you his peace in the mighty name of Jesus. Sir. The peace of the Lord you will be established in your home. The blessing of the Lord will be established in your part. The increase of the Lord will be established in the works of your hand. The greatness of the Lord will be established with you in the name of Jesus. The covenant of the Lord will be established with you in the mighty name of Jesus. You are saved from your going out. You are preserved coming in. In the mighty name of Jesus. Great shall be your increase. Great shall be your increase. In the mighty name of Jesus. We say the Lord will send you help. In the mighty name of Jesus. Sir. Every word of the Lord that you have held on to, the seal of the Lord will perform there. Sir. In the mighty name of Jesus. Sir. I bring you into a season of performance. Sir. In the mighty name of Jesus. Sir. I bring you into a season of performance. Sir. In the mighty name of Jesus. Sir. Every word of the Lord that you have held on to, for years that has passed, I speed up the performance of the word of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will perform every of his word in the mighty name of Jesus. Sir. The Lord will perform every of his word in the name of Jesus. Sir. The Lord will perform every of his word in the mighty name of Jesus. Sir. Every word of God that you have held on to this year. Lord, even these seven days before the end of this year, you will see the performances of those words uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, you will see the performances of those words uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, not the performance that comes by the hands of man, uh, but that which the seeds of the Lord brings forth. Uh, you will see performances uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, you will see performances in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, you are establishing righteousness in the name of Jesus, sir. You are establishing righteousness in the name of Jesus. Stand to your feet as we read John chapter 14. John chapter 14, we'll read from verse 1 to 7. John chapter 14. Now, the summary of all I've been saying this morning is that you don't believe the narratives and you don't get lost in the noise and in the crowd about why he came. We are not just celebrating his birth. We are celebrating the life that he came to give us. And these are the pictures of the life in question. Do not let your heart be troubled. Let it not be distressed. Don't get agitated. You believe in and adhere to and trust and rely on God. Listen, the order to get the fullness of this life is what Jesus is bringing. Let there be reliance on God. Believe in and adhere to and trust and rely also on me. In the finished work that I've come to do, verse 2. That in my father's house, there are many there are, you know, in my father's house, there are many dwelling places, homes. If it were not so, I would not have told you. Listen, in this house, there is a life, there is an experience that is different. Sir. There is an experience in this life that is different from the one you have known. And I have come to prepare and give you a portion. In this experience, if it were not so, I am not giving you a fluke. I am not giving you something that is real. I am giving you something that is sure as the day. He said, if it were not so, I would not have told you for I am going away to prepare the place for you. No, listen, I didn't just bring an experience that was valid 2,000 years ago. I am bringing an experience that is valid even now. So that is why I didn't just prepare a place for them then. 
He's still talking about a preparation that is ahead, which is the time and that yourself and I are into. Verse 4. And so the place where I am going, you know. Verse 5. Thomas said to him, Lord, you, you, you are like Thomas. You looked at all these things. You don't even understand this life you are talking about. You came as flesh, but you are divine. If we don't understand the life, how can we express the life? And verse 6, where I'm stopping this morning, Jesus said to him, I am the way. Listen, this life is not complex. I am the truth that bats the life, that sustains the life. I am the truth about the life. What you see displayed in me and through me is what you should expect in your life. I speak with the Father daily. My Father did not leave me alone. My Father, I did not come to just do my own works. I have come to do according as it is written of me. You are not here just on your own platform. You are here for a purpose. And that purpose will not be missed in the mighty name of Jesus. Sir. And finally, I am the life. I am not calling you into a labor. I am calling you into a pattern that I have set myself to display for you. And the life, no one comes to the Father except through me. Listen, the fullness of all we are talking about is wrapped up in a person. And the person of Jesus. If there is any commitment you will make in the year to come, is to know him more, love him more, honor him the more. And you will experience the fullness of this life. Just lift your hand this morning and bless God for that which he has brought for us to have in the mighty name of Jesus. I want us to pray that God, I will be a partaker of the fullness of this life in the name of Jesus, sir. I will be a partaker of the fullness of this life in the mighty name of Jesus, sir. Lord, I partake of the fullness of this life. He said, of his fullness have we all received grace for grace. Lord, I receive fullness in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I am a partaker of this fullness in the mighty name of Jesus. I am a partaker of this fullness in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We give you praise. Lord, we partake of this fullness in the mighty name of Jesus.